let's do it. Let's go. <clears throat> Good morning. All right. So we're going to kick it off today. Today is the beginning of the interview series. Uh, what do we decide we want to call this, Tiffany? <laughs> Interviewing yeah. success. Interview of success. There we go. What she said. And we have two phenomenal people. Uh, Elizabeth and Giddy are going to talk a little bit about their successes. And I don't say their last names because the truth of the matter is I can't pronounce either of their last names. So I'll let you guys handle that when the time comes. Otherwise, I will uh, absolutely butcher the heck out of them. These two ladies are unbelievable in what they've been able to do and what they've been able to accomplish in their real estate career. Some short, a little bit longer in one of them, but we're going to dive into that when we get to Elizabeth. I have at my right, Miss Giddy. Giddy, how the hell do you say your last name? <laughs> um, it's Leibowitz as my maiden name. And then I adopted Shapansky once I got married. So just for the fun of it, it's Leibowitz Shapansky. Giddy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all right. Because I'm not going to do that. I just can't. So um, I came across Giddy. She's been in. Well, why don't you give us your some statistics about what you've been about your real estate career, where you're at right now? All right. So I moved to the area about 13 years ago. I was a teacher. The reason why we moved to Orlando is my husband opened a Jewish private school and I was a teacher for the school. He needed me for the first year or so. And after that, I said, no, I don't want to be a teacher anymore. And I found myself cooking in the kitchen. So for about 11 years, I was a private chef, which was enjoyable, but I wasn't meeting people. I wasn't getting the face to face. So I recently, uh, eight months ago, um, got my license for real estate and I'm loving it. So give us some statistics. Some She's statistics. been in real estate for eight months, eight months now and I've got some really cool things to show for. Go ahead. Okay. So just sold my ninth house yesterday and one coming up, um, three listings coming up. One of those nine that was sold, um, was, from a door knocking experience, which I'll explain soon. Um, I'm aware of about 12 homes that are vacant and I've already been in touch with all 12 homeowners, letting them know I'm here for you if you need me. Um, what else? Well, all right, let's, let's stop right there. So <laughs> she works this community. The community has 1,100, how many homes in there? 1,311. Okay, now this is a really, really neat neighborhood in our area in Orlando, and this is where she's, this is her farm area, because really ultimately what we're talking about is because some really great farming. How many people have you met in that neighborhood already in eight months? At least 500. Okay, all right, and this is, so you knock on doors, I'm assuming, is that right? Tell, yeah. tell us what you do. How do you get yourself out in the neighborhood? Okay, so um, yeah, I, I really still enjoy feeding people. I love baking breads, and but I, I want to sell houses, not not challah breads and cakes and cookies, and right? So I make an abundance of challah. Uh, <clears throat> challah bread. This is the bomb, by the way. Every time she comes over, I get one. So she has to come over like two or three times a week. So what do you do with the challah bread? So I wrap it up pretty, and I knock on a door, and I say, hey, um, my name is Gitty, and I just live down the block or a few blocks over, and New Year's resolution... I said, I'm coming out to meet you. So here I am. I used, and that, it's not like a, you know, a whole verbal diarrhea uh, spiel. Uh, it's a conversation. I, I pause, I wait for them to introduce themselves. Um, and I tell them that I used to be a chef and I still love feeding people. I brought you guys a challah bread. Everybody lights up. I mean, who's not excited, right? Very often I'll see people or I'll hear people like on the other side of the door, they're looking through that people because they don't want another solar panel solicitor <laughs> but they see the holla bread and they open that door like oh hello even if there's a no soliciting sign the door opens when they see something uh that looks like food food connects people so um i tell them that i used to be a chef but now i'm a realtor and if you need anything if, if you need a good a plumber an electrician a roofer i have all those numbers connector and that's real important because remember we provide value and that value in this case is hollow and everybody's like well how does she market and that's what the front of it looks like and then right behind it happens to be a business card and by the way it's amazing but this is her i hate to say this because it i don't want it to sound uh sticky but that's her hook is the hollow bread we have a, a business partner of ours i'm not going to mention christy paul's name because that would be inappropriate who is the cup of sugar lady Okay, so again, I won't mention Christy Paul's name out of, uh, uh, she's over on the West Coast. So if you have any referrals on the West Coast of Florida, again, not going to mention Christy Paul's name, and she's the cup of sugar girl. 
what's your hook? How do they know you? And this was so powerful that, can I borrow some of this one real quick? This is the part that's really cool. These are love letters, not legitimate love letters, letters from people who actually looked her up to say thank you, and they send her chocolates. And this is delivered to her house at her door, thank you very much, from people that are like, oh my God. So uh, one of my favorite stories is the duck pond story. You know the one I'm talking yes, about? Yes, yes. Please share that with them. All right, so one Saturday. Wait, 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 one second, I gotta lead to it. This is the power of getting known. And you all think about that. If, if she's known at this level, what does that do for her ability to create and continue relationships, which is ultimately where our listings come from, having relationships where they know and trust you? Tell us the, the story, please. All right. So one Saturday, I was walking with my seven-year-old around a duck pond in my area, and a woman was bike riding with her son, Finn. And she's like, stops me. And she says, hey, are you giddy? And I'm like, yeah, I don't think I know you. She says, no, no, but my son found out from his friend in school that just lives a few blocks over, they got a challah bread and he wanted one too. <laughs> How cool is that? Do y'all get that? That like they're, they're soliciting for her to come to the house. So um, I just, that just, that moved me so much. I thought it was great. And just to make you nervous, there's a hundred people watching oh, you right don't now. Don't tell me. Okay, well, only a hundred because it says 101, but we don't count. So it's only a hundred. Here's George. the part though. She can't use a computer. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's comical. She is not a tech person. Now she's with a very technology forward company, uh, but that doesn't help her to the slightest. Can you show us how you keep track of the people you're going to see and the people you're meeting? This is so cool. Okay. I use this same thing. Does anybody here, it should, just people I can see, y'all know what IMAP is? Does that ring a bell? IMAP is a, it's a software that we have available in most MLSs nationwide. Uh, remember all that? Yep. Okay. So this is one of 12 of her neighborhoods right up here. And this is how she knows if she's hit every single door and who she's met, where she keeps track of who she's met. And there are, uh, here's a list of all their names and everything else. And this right here, this is her 386 computer by Macro Microsoft, or in this case by Office Max. And everything is in there. But it still works because what she's doing is you're having relationships, you're creating relationships with people. So knocking on doors, what's it sound like when you go knock on a door? Tell, tell us, that, and you're, you guys are going to have to change unless you can make challah bread like she does. By the way, she doesn't actually make challah bread. Who makes it? <laughs> I've trained someone to do it for me. There you go. And, and that would be your housekeeper. My housekeeper. She's, she's awesome. She's my rock star. Yeah. So I've, I used, I did it a lot. And then it was like, it's the whole day process. Making challah is like a big deal. And if I want to make 80 of them at a time, it's a very big deal. And I don't have time for that. So I pay her uh, about 150 once a week to restock my freezer. And then when I take out, you know, 10 per day, um, they're fresh. They're, they can smell through the wrapper. People tell me, oh, I could smell it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to have that for breakfast with a little butter and a little pancake syrup. Folks, the idea is though, it, whether it's challah bread, whether it's uh, you're the cup of sugar girl, whatever it is, how are you known? And this is farming and farming is a listing potential. Here's my prediction. You've got 1300 homes in that neighborhood. Is that right? About, yeah. Once you hit every one of them, which will be in the next couple of months and the reputation is already spreading as people are approaching you, you walk down the street and they're like, Oh my God, it, there's Gitty, the holla girl, right? And I give them a heads up like, oh, I can't wait to, you know, next time I see you around town, I'm going to wave. Hi, Sherry. And like, it's just so much fun for me that I just met you. It's, this is, this is my joy. I, I let them know that this is the moment that's exciting for me. It's not about selling your house. Maybe one day, yes, maybe one day, no, but this is what my goal is. And knocking on doors is not going to be instant gratification. You're not going to get a listing right away. It's about well, actually, getting that's out there. True. You can. It, yeah. it does happen. We may actually hear something exactly like that in just a couple of minutes when we jump over and oh, have okay. Miss Liz kind of cover it for us. Brian, give us a couple seconds. I won't forget you. I promise. Okay. So um, what do you say when you, when you go to the door? So I, I tell them, you know, I, I live just a few blocks over and I made a new year's resolution that I am coming to meet my neighbors. <clears throat> Very often they look at me like, okay, but what are you really here for? Right? So I say, no, really, I know that this sounds a little crazy, but I actually think it's crazier that we don't know each other. I've been in the area 13 years. How many years have you been here for? And it starts a conversation. 
And then they're like, so like, they're just waiting for that. Like, what's next? I said, you know what? I was going to write down my name and number because I'm a neighbor and I want you to be in touch with me if you need anything. But like, I didn't want to get my hand all tired. So I just put a business card in there. I happen to be a realtor, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to meet you. I mean, if you know anybody who's thinking of selling or buying, def- give me a holler. Definitely call me. If you need a plumber, an electrician, a roofer, I've got all the best numbers. Please call me. Um, otherwise, enjoy the ho- very good sliced toast it with butter, some real good eggs on the side. I get them excited about the bread. Make French toast. It is so good. I just talk, how many children do you have? How many, like I talk about my, my personal stuff yeah. so that we can relate and connect somewhere. It Where creates you, a relationship. Yeah, like I'm from Brooklyn. Where are you from? Really? People, I mean, people pick up on my accent <laughs> right away. Um, I'm also from Jersey. So I've also went to school in Rhode Island. You have to find the common denominator somewhere. We all can relate in some way. So that's what I'm doing door to door, trying to find out how can we relate. So here's some statistics that I will let you know will happen. And, and this is, uh, I, I did farming in my neighborhood. A friend of mine, a lady named Jenny Weimer, uh, who was, is now one of the top real estate agents in the entire world. She's just absolutely amazing. She had a 400 community, 400 house community that she farmed. I had 115 house community that I farmed. After about two years, both of us had a 90% capture rate on any listing going in there. Y'all listen to that. of the homes that were sold were sold by Jenny in her community or by me in my community. Okay, this is what happens with farming done at a very high level. Now, Jenny had a, uh, I'll I'll just throw that out there because you're, this may be something that would work for you as well. She had an Easter egg hunt. She had a Halloween uh, Halloween, uh, candy giveaway for the kids. And there was an ice cream social in summer. Those were her three events she did in the community. They were very well received. She put out a newsletter once a month. You and I got to get to what's the mailings look like. And I know you're already doing them, but how do you, how do we make sure that she, once they meet her, they know her. Once every one of you is face to face with somebody, <coughs> particularly with, I don't know, some form of, of a hook, a relationship is established and that relationship is stronger than anything else. And this is what I want you guys to gather that you're going to have to do things that are going to make you a little bit uncomfortable. I'll bet it was uncomfortable the first time you were like, holy oh, cow. It was so uncomfortable the first time <laughs> I made very, very bad blooper mistakes. Like I have a woman in California who's thinking about um, your house. Don't ever, ever say that. That was like a big no, no. So I, I made my mistakes and I still get a little bit nervous because you ne- there are some people that are just rotten and not happy individuals. I can't help them. They're going to be unhappy wherever they go, whoever they meet. But at least I could still smile and I could still say, you know, I just wanted to come and meet you. It's okay. It can't be afraid of a, an angry person. What's he going to do? The worst he's going to do is slam the door and say, don't ever come back. I'll make a note of it. Okay. Big black mark on their <laughs> thing. Now, this is something I created a while ago. This is my neighborhood. And I made this big board because this is my neighborhood right in the middle. I think that's what I'm showing. Because what I was going to do, I have not done it. I own it. Uh, I made this through IMAP, by the way. I wanted to make sure I met every single person. That's what I did when I was doing my farming previously. It's what you're currently doing. This is why it's so ironic that we're doing the same thing. <laughs> I needed to meet every single person in my community. And it took me about eight months to do so to the point that the last three or four, I had to knock on their door said, I know every other person in this neighborhood, but I've never met you face to face. So I need to meet you so I can check you off my list. And they're like, what? I said, don't worry about it. I just, I mean, I I just, I just told them the truth. I said, I'm going to meet everybody. You're the last three people I need to meet. And, And I knew everybody in the neighborhood. So it became a better place for me to live. I loved living in Cypress Springs. It was in Cypress Springs where I lived. Jenny had the same experience. You're having that same experience. You're creating community and it's not that hard to do. It just takes some time. Now, this is the part I wanted to get to. You just randomly do this and you wake up and you're like, oh, I think I'll go and knock on doors today. Is it just random like that? Or do you actually <clears throat> know what you're going to do every day? So I used to be a little bit of a mess, but George. <laughs> Big time, huge mess. <laughs> wow. Um, George, like, kind of helped me figure out there's going to be a lot of personal stuff and there's going to be a lot of business stuff. And he literally made a schedule for me. And the night before every 
evening, I'll, I'll make a, okay, what's the most important thing I need to do from my business list? What's the most important thing I need to do from my personal list? And it's got to happen sometime between 9.30 and 2.30 because that's my day. Um, just, just pick up the kids at two 30. She's got to leave, be there for three. I happen to know this because we were talking about her schedule, but y'all get that the night before. And that's really, really important. If you've got something that needs to be done, don't try and put it on your schedule. Like today, if you say, well, I think I'm going to do something today, baloney, you won't be accountable to it the night before you can put what's important on your schedule and that will get done. Now you're getting, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but that was really the mission statement. I'm much, How is more, that I'm much more productive. And I'm much more in control and like, come, okay, there's always going to be that very long list of things that need to happen. It's not realistic for me to try to cram it all. And I was like not being realistic. I'm a little bit of an overachiever. So I was cramming in too much and breaking down. Yeah. And now <laughs> she's got two lists. One's a to-do list because she doesn't have a computer. So she can't put it on a thing like things or yeah. a to-do list or something. So it's, can, can you show it to us? This is all right. So I, I hold on. Wait, look. She carries these <laughs> around everywhere. Y'all get this? This thing weighs like six pounds. Do not, under any circumstances, get her pissed at you if she hits you with that right hand, which carries all this. She will knock your ass out. All right. I'm serious. She's only like five foot two, but she will. She will tear you up, boys and girls. Um, so I'm gonna give you a blank one. Okay. My my real one is too busy for today. This is legitimately her phone calendar, not on a phone. And at night she fills it in, what am I gonna do? And in there, uh, it always has, uh, well, most of the time it'll have, I'm gonna deliver Holland. That's a couple hours and she knows mm -hmm. where she's going and she's on point meeting everybody, right? Yeah. And so far it's not worked at all, right? Right. Yeah, maybe a little <laughs> bit. You're going to have a 90% capture rate. I'm positive of it with what you're doing inside of two years. I cannot wait to see this. Now that's 1300 homes, but I haven't seen many people that have been as committed and said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my neighborhood, which is what I'm hoping you all will start thinking. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to meet every single person in my neighborhood, which is what I'm hoping you all will start thinking and have something. Now, yours is hollow, which I love. Right. And I was going to say, like, I don't think that it's realistic to start thinking, OK, I got to get a good hollow recipe. I got to start making hollow like this worked for me because it was brainless and easy for me. And I was a chef before making a whole lot of stuff. So it's just like, I only have to make hollow like once a week. It's amazing. But you got to do what's comfortable for you. It could be a cup of sugar. It could be literally, it could be whatever that thing is. I do have a phone number. I mean, no, I have an email address to a friend of mine who is a marketing um, little genius. And she's happy to help anybody who calls them up and says, help me out with something. And then you play on words to make it catchy and fun. Like for me, it's the holla. So I say, hey, when I'm leaving, I say, and if you know anybody, if you're thinking, if you need anything, give me a holler, give me a holla um, for Halloween. It's a uh, happy Halloween. You know, like I play on the words throughout the year. I change it up. Um, I, my business, my little cards that go on top of the business card right now, it says um, happy holidays, but I'm getting, I'm changing it up and I'm gonna, <laughs> and it says, from your neighbor it doesn't i used to say from giddy your neighbor from giddy your neighbor it used to say um from your neighborhood realtor um it used to say like are you thinking of selling maybe buying call give me call me or you know from your neighborhood realtor i scratched that all out it's not necessary it's obvious with the business card behind it my front cover is just from your neighbor give me a challah or happy holidays or because every day is a holiday Whatever, you get the idea. Play on words to something. And I'm going to try to put it in the comments, my friend's email. Uh, you just tell it to us, we'll put it in. Joe, pay attention to this. You're going to type this in. Uh, now, what we're going to do, Krista, let's start with you. You've got your hand up. I want to get into some Q&A uh, until uh, nine o'clock. And y'all stick around because uh, Elizabeth is coming on. Liz is coming on and doing something that is also massively inspirational. And her business is exploding. This is the beginnings of what is going to be an incredible journey with realistically 30 to 40 listings that just start calling her over the next year or so as she continues to create relationships. And for you to duplicate this, you have to do one thing. You have to talk to people. And now you've figured out where you're going to talk to them. You can talk to them in open houses. That works great. But she's talking to them in her neighborhood. And that's part of it. It's a community. And almost every nice person out there wants community, which is what makes it so easy and so well received. 
So I want to do some Q&A with everybody. Okay. Let them ask you some questions and dig deep. We're going to do this for five minutes because I got to get Liz up here. I can't wait. Krista, why don't you take it away for us, young lady? Raise your hand if you have anything to do. You want uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for this call. Amazing. Um, I am doing, I have a farm as well of 1,200. And what I'm, you know, and I've been walking it. So I think I've walked um, probably 250 doors. Obviously not everybody answers. So, you know, maybe I've had 50 good conversations. I have some listings coming up from that. But how do you follow up? Like, you know, you, you drop off your bread. You know, well, that's where like after walking 250 houses and only 50 doors opened, do I go back? Um, okay. Or do I continue with you the whole neighborhood? Yeah. And I do the same, George. Actually, I actually also Here. print out the iMap the as IMAP. well. This is so oh, okay. I, I do have my iMap to know which door I've knocked and which, who did not answer. But my, my, um, my thing is like, how do I follow up? Second. Okay. Um, one second. I got to show this. This is her Rolodex. Literally, she has business cards. She doesn't have it in her phone. Okay. That's that's what we're talking about here. And um, so this is answering important. your Brian, question. you're next. I promise. Specific to the questions. So here is a map of all the homes off of IMAP that she pulled up, Krista, specific to what you're asking about. And behind that map, is everybody's name and their address and everything else. Is that correct? Yeah. And then you have notes in here with a smiley face. Y'all see that? There's smiley faces on there. <laughs> and what is that? What does the smiley face mean? So the smiley face means that they were happy. They received the hollow bread, you know, happy people. If they were um, like ag aggressive, I will never, don't ever come back. I'm going to die in this house. I don't want to ever see you again. I made a sad face. There's probably about three out of my 500. Everyone is happy to receive conversation food um like people just want to see people especially after covid like you don't realize how many people are no. so many elders are sitting there alone in their homes i've been welcomed in can you come inside can you sit with me for a few minutes my pleasure why not if i'm if i'm going to act as that neighbor that i'm just coming to meet you so then why would i not come into their home i mean you have to use your own judgment i live in a very like nice community where people are very friendly you got to you got to use your own judgment on that but um so what I say to them is I really would love, you know, I, one thing that I tell them as far as follow-up is look out for my postcards because we're going to be doing a giveaway soon. And I would love for you to be part of that. So that's like a, another like connecting piece. Another thing that I tell them is um, I really would love to see you again. And I feel like this community can use a little bit of glue. Like everybody's just in their own homes doing their own thing. Do you, if you have any ideas for me that would be a fun event that we could plan together, please email me or call me. You have my number, you have my email. Please call me. And people are emailing me with some great ideas. One woman said she wants to meet with me for coffee um, and I, she's on my to-do list. But if we have someone in the community that's trying to plan an event together, it could be a magic show one night at, in the community playground. It could be... Um, Anything, anything. Yeah. If we got to do something for the older community, something for the younger ones, something for the, you know, young professionals, but that's something that I'm trying to do so that there can be continuous connection. One of the things that is important, watch for the email or watch for my postcard and in the postcard is a giveaway so she can start collecting emails because besides meeting people, you want their communication information as well. And that's really important. Now, a lot of them are calling her and giving it to her in the conversations or just sharing it organically, but there's a way to pull it out as well. Um, Brian, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Hi, good morning. Just two questions. So one, you know, are you, are you, are you door knocking in neighborhoods that are either no soliciting or HOA communities or when have those yes. restrictions? Because I know that could be an issue in some areas. And number two, you know, how long until you start seeing, you know, uh, like an ROI return, you start seeing those listings from when you, when you originally spoke to them? So some of the homes that, first of all, yes, I am in, I, I'm knocking on my community, which is, I think, everyone's best start. And to be fair, she's not soliciting. She's bringing community together and offering something that is not a solicitation. She's not asking for anything, nor is she selling anything. She's simply creating a community and meeting her neighbors. That is not against the rules. And you are going to find jerks, but not that many of them. Right. Answer if that someone right. has asked me, uh, did you see my sign that says no soliciting? I smile at them and say, I'm not soliciting. I'm a neighbor. I'm here to, I brought you a challah bread. I used to be a chef. 
I want to introduce myself. This is my New Year's resolution, and I'm halfway through. And today was your lucky day. You get a fresh challah bread. There, right away, they smile. It's over. There's nothing to talk about. I'm a, I'm just a neighbor trying to say hello. And then I say, well, can you tell me about yourself? Like, I actually came to meet you. So how long have you lived here? Like, oh, that's beautiful. You've been here from the beginning. You are the original homeowners. It's like a natural, exciting conversation. I really want to learn about you. And I've met people that are zookeepers at Animal Kingdom, dancers at Disney. I mean, I'm just like- It's a lot of fun. Blown away. One woman that lives in uh, down the block from me was- Miss Orlando about 50 years ago. She's super cool, <laughs> like, you know, and I, 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 the other question you asked me was how soon are you going to get like results? So sometimes this happened a few times already where as I'm talking to them about like, I'm also a realtor. If you know anybody's thinking of selling, buying, blah, blah, blah. They say, you won't believe it. I'm actually renovating my house right now. I'm about to list it like next week. Come on in. And I'm like, no way. We're going to get a lot more of this uh, in just a couple of seconds and really about two minutes when Elizabeth comes up and has a conversation. You'll be blown away by what has happened to her in her business and how she's doing. So I want to carry on. We had any other questions because we're going to have to cut this off to make sure we have time for Elizabeth. All right. Um, somebody's lighting up there. Uh, Chris is good. Uh, Steve, go ahead, Steve. It's actually Susan. Okay, go ahead, Susan. <laughs> I'm actually, yeah, I'm, how do you keep your notes on your follow-up? Like, how do you remember that it's Miss Orlando? How do you remember that it's somebody who moved from New Jersey five years ago? Like, where and how do you keep track of that? Because it's time-consuming after each visit to make those notes. The only notes that I need to write down is when someone says they want to sell in five months. Or um, if someone tells me the house next door is vacant, she just went to an old age home, um, um, assisted living home or whatever. So then I write down those notes. But when someone's talking to me for a half an hour in their living room about that she was Miss Orlando and she's got five little ladies around her, I feel like I'm in the middle of Golden Girls. Like, <laughs> you don't forget that. Every time I see her, I wave to her, hey, Connie, how are you? I'm riding my son. My son's riding his bike around the duck pond every single day. Hey, Bill. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jose. Hi, Con. Like, it's just... Well, and also to be fair, you have opportunities to, because with, remember, she's got this map, which is from IMAP. It's software that almost everybody in the country has. And in there is a list of everybody's name and phone number. Yeah. Uh, we can pull it out. That'd be great. We got to show you, you a write, close up. You can write some notes on this. So this is the, thank you. Bring it like all the way up. If you go on to IMAP, you're going to see their names. So you could be a little bit of a, you know, it's a little freaky to someone opens the door and right away you're like, hey, Jim. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit more organic to, um, hi, my name is Gitty. What's your name? Um, but you get their names already. Right. And you know, so that's where you're going to keep your notes. And um, I hate to do this, but I absolutely positively know that everybody needs to hear what's coming next. So uh, Giddy, thank you for very, very much. You did great. She was freaked out and nervous about this. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, I reserve the right to pull you back for more on farming 101 when we dive deep into it, where you and I can just tear it apart. Uh, I have a feeling we're probably going to want Liz on there too. Uh, okay. And you need to stick around for this one. If you, you're welcome to stay if you want to. If you got to run, great, but definitely keep your eyes out on this one. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Giddy with a name I can't pronounce, but she's awesome. She's here in the Orlando area. And if you ever have anybody looking in her neighborhood, which is, uh, I forgot the name of it. Sand Lake Hills. Sand Lake Hills. Uh, don't, don't bother trying to help them. Just refer them to her because she owns it and she will own it more. I can't wait for the follow-up. Thank you so much. You were awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. You want to stick around or are you gonna, do you have to run? I think I'm going to go, Okay, but uh, I'm going to be on with my phone. Okay, cool. So uh, now, Elizabeth, good morning. Thank you for being here. I am so excited. I had a chance to uh, dig into what Giddy's doing, and I haven't had that opportunity as deeply with Elizabeth, but I, I know some successes that are coming here, and I was blown away by it. So um, pronounce your last name so I don't destroy it. Quinones. Okay, wouldn't have gotten anywhere close to that. I was going coin ones. I was, I mean, I literally was, I can spell it. It's C-O-I-C-O-I-N-O-N-E-S, right? There's no C. Oh, okay, Q. never mind. I can't even spell it. Forget it. So folks, um, 
give us your background. When, when did you start in real estate? What was, I, and I know the answers to this one. Uh, and then how long have you been in our group with the GPS group and, and really kind of crushing it? Thank you. Okay. Hey guys, um, I'm Liz Quinones. Um, I've been in real estate for four years now. Um, I've been with, I was with my previous organization. Um, I've been with GPS for six months um, now. So I'm really excited. Um, actually four months in production when I left my previous brokerage to come to EXP, my anniversary date is in November. So I took those two months off just to really get acclimated. And then I went full force for the first, um, since January. So it's been crazy. Give us your productions the last six months. Tell us, tell us what's happening. So I've done 11 closings in six months. I have five, um, five pending right now, actually six, because I just got my listing under contract, the one that I door knocked for. So I'm going to talk about that in a couple minutes. Um, and the results from it has been insane. Um, I have five new listings coming up in the next 30 to 45 days, probably sooner. Um, and I just with the open house that we did for the listing that we did get on their contract and door knock for, um, we had great results from it. Um, so we probably going to have another about four listings come up in the community. Wow. Y'all hear that? And you've been doing this for six months or so really in production. Now I know four. where you were before you are four, excuse me, really four. Mm -hmm. uh, previous to this, were you in production with the other team you were involved with? So I was on a team at a previous brokerage. Um, I was on an actual team um, and I was doing anywhere from 10 to 15 transactions a year, where this year I am looking to do a minimum of 40 by myself. So, so let's really talk excited. about, real quickly, let's go backwards to that team. When you were on the team, because I happen to know the team leader and a great mm -hmm. guy, a great thing. You were more buyer side at that point and not oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that's an important buyers. distinction. So while she's selling around 10 or 15 homes uh, with a buyer lead, the leads were coming in, they were given to her, that's great. When, and this is the part I want you all to get, when she said, all right, I'm going to do this myself and I'm actually going to be my own rainmaker, all of a sudden, massive Florida thunderstorm started. And in fact, that's a great lead in to the story you and I were just talking about. And I want to get yeah. the end results of that too. This is the tease. And then we'll go into what it is. You were telling me when you and I were talking about a very rainy day just a couple of days ago. Can you tell us about yeah. that? Yeah, guys. So um, my listing went live on Thursday um, and I door knocked Wednesday evening I make a commitment to my sellers on um, this community that we had the listing. I, I had the first listing, um, the, the, the community itself, they, all the homes are from 2020. So it's brand new, new construction. I got a listing from a referral agent in, um, so I sold that house, got 41,000 over and, but I've made a commitment to those sellers at that time to door knock the entire community. So when these guys gave me a call because they saw what I was able to get for that client, they called me and I made a commitment to my sellers that evening that I was going to door knock the entire community to let everyone know about the open house. Guys, it was raining. I was soaking wet. <laughs> But I made a commitment to my sellers that I was going to door knock that evening in preparation for the open house. So by door knocking, I actually earned, I'm not going to say got, I'm not going to say I, I earned listing number three and four in that community and possibly a fifth in, in the, and this community only has 39 homes. So I dominated that community. It's one block. That's the community. And now I'm picking up three, four, and I have a listing appointment for number five. Outstanding. So it begs the question, and I, and I, I can hear that question. Well, I don't have any <laughs> listings. Where did that first listing come from? So this listing came from a referral agent in um, Mini, is it Minneapolis? He's from up north, if I'm not mistaken. So it came from a referral agent. Um, and I sat there, spoke with the sellers. You would think we knew each other for an entire year. And the best part, it's literally five minutes from my house. So I didn't have, I'm in the Davenport Haines City borderline. So I was just like, I don't want to have to door knock in Orlando because that's 45 minutes to an hour. It was great because it's local and right by me. Outstanding. Outstanding. So, um, I'm just, I'm blown away by the amount of velocity you've picked up so quickly. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute this to? And I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but I'd really like to hear it from you. What, how did you get started? Were you, cause I mean, I'm assuming when you, when you left your team, which was feeding you mm -hmm. business, 
decidedly a hell of a lot less than you're going to make on your own as a rainmaker. You had to make some emotional changes too. And for everybody listening, y'all listen, pay attention to this part. You had to do something that was probably a little bit uncomfortable. Is that fair? Oh, absolutely. I no, I'm not going to lie to any single one of you. I've never door knocked a day in my life. All right. Never so, door knocked. So, so once you did something uncomfortable, um, and we'll come back to the, the never door knock because mm -hmm. I do want to hear about that. Are you more comfortable now that you've got an ass load of money in your pocket and more coming in? Is the, the, no. the income and the success you've had kind of counteract the uncomfortableness that you've actually been, you know, with the door knocking? Um, yes and no. So I still get nervous. Like right now, I am super nervous on this call. However, I'm like, oh my God, I'm seeing the success of it. I have to do it again. Like, what if I pick up listing number six, seven, and eight? So it just gives me that momentum to continue to do it. Outstanding. I, but I, I'm still I, nervous. I'm human, well, as, you, know? you know? what? And it, it goes that way for everybody. Uh, I, my accountability partner is Tom uh, Martin, just because he's been 20 years. We started real estate together. And I know you and Tom are very close. The thing is, you're going to have to do things that are uncomfortable for you, but in doing them, they become more comfortable. They're part of your routine, as you've exampled, as Giddy has exampled as well. Um, give us a fun story about the first door knocking experience and what went on in your head. I can only imagine the horror. So I said, oh, my God, I have to door knock because um, I made this commitment to my sellers. I'm like, let's see what this is going to look like. So I started door knocking. I had I only had open house flyers. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't soliciting. I said, you know what? Let me just think this out. How can I approach these people so that it doesn't sound salesy? So I took my open house flyer and I started door knocking all the homes. And I was like, hey, guys, my name is Liz. I just want you to know that I put the listing. Um, I put this home on the market market um today we're you know we're live and i wanted to in personally invite you to the open house and if you have any questions be and just let you know about the incoming traffic that may be coming in and um you know that's going to come through the community and if you have any questions because of the people that you know they may be too rowdy my phone number's on there please don't hesitate to give me a call i want to call back I amanda uh, do you have something you want to add no may have just been on mute that's cool great no worries so a lot of people are probably saying the thing that would be, and and this is real important, and I need your help on this one, Liz. We got to talk mm -hmm. people out of this. Well, in my community, it's no soliciting. In my area, I can't do that. That I won't work where I'm at. Figure out a solution, because if you're going to follow the herd, mm -hmm. your view is going to be of somebody's backside. Absolutely. Me. Absolutely. Like I did not solicit. I was just sending an open invitation and giving my contact information in, in case there was an emergency or something happened to the community that they can call me directly. So I didn't solicit and everyone was like, oh my God, thank you so much for inviting me. By the way, what's the house on the market for? Hmm. That was the conversation. And as I was door knocking the night that I was soaking wet, the, um, the buyers, um, excuse me, the sellers that I obtained, they were like, hey, we actually have a realtor. We haven't heard from her in two years and we've been considering selling our house. They're like, but you're out here in the rain. And I'm like, but I have an umbrella. They're like, but you're wet. I'm like, it's okay. I made a commitment to my sellers to door knock this entire community. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to lie, guys. I didn't want to do it because it was pouring. But I, and I got in my truck. I took off and then circled back around and I said, you know what? I'm not going to be that person. I am going to make myself uncomfortable. I'm comfortable. I'm going to do it. And I repped the reward of that because now you're talking three listings from on the same community and then from the open house because people saw the signs and how we market it and how I did my marketing strategy. And now I picked up four new, uh, four new sellers from the surrounding communities and they all need to buy. Folks. This is an example of what thinking outside the box will do. In fact, I would almost argue that there is more benefit in door knocking in the rain than not in the rain because it amplifies your commitment to what yeah. you're doing. And obviously the rewards are phenomenal. We're making impressions. And, and what you've done on this one, Liz, is you've made, this is my, my, my version of it. You've made this magnificent impression. It's raining and you're still doing what you committed to. I love that.
And the sellers and, the, you know, my new sellers, they were like, oh my God, like we can see the level of hustling you. We know you are going to work for us. And my sellers that we got under contract that they're, you know, I was door knocking for them. They're like, wow, Liz, it's incredible that you actually are going to do this right now. And I'm like, guys, I am a woman of my word. If I tell you I'm going to do something, I am going to do it. And you have to just make sure that you uphold yourself to that level of commitment. Don't say you're going to do something and not do it. Just makes you look bad. We got a great message in here from Jason. Jason, if you're on the call, unmute yourself because I'd love to have you uh, verbalize that for those who can't read it. And it goes right along with what you're doing, Liz, and it really kind of validates the fact that it's not uh, it's it's not this huge pushback. Jason, are you are you live? Can you talk? Oh, yes, I can talk. Hold on, I'm trying All to right, get so my Zoom kind of encapsulate up. what you just wrote in there, if you would, so everybody that doesn't have the chat can hear you. Um. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, yesterday I went door knocking for an open house that we have on Saturday. I went to one guy's house and he said this is a, a no soliciting neighborhood. And I said, oh, no worry, I'm not trying to uh, solicit anything to you. I'm just out here because of the increased traffic. We're having this open house. You might see some cars that you don't know in the neighborhood. And he said, oh, thank you so much. He said, oh, that's great. And I said, I'm just out here to inform everybody. Then he was real nice, turned the conversation around, and he thanked me for coming by. And he actually took a flyer. Outstanding. And that's, that's it. Now, you're all like, well, I can't do that because there's no soliciting. Remember this? Yeah. This is bread. This isn't soliciting. This is, I'm a neighbor. I promise you, I, I promise everybody here, if you do what Liz is doing, if you do what Giddy is doing, if you do what in your mind you want to do, but you're a little nervous about it and you push yourself past it. Tom, that's me on the phone making the calls. I know, brother, I will respond to you and I'll make sure I do it. If you push yourself past it, there is massive joy and success at the other side of it, but it's going to take commitment. And oh, here's the little secret. Liz, help me with this one. The first couple of times you do it, you're going to suck at it. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Some of the conversations that I had, I was stumbling all over my words and everything. Um, and this is the importance of script and role playing and understanding objections. So I'm like, I'm a firm believer in script and role play. Um, I don't believe that you need to do the full script word for word because you have to personalize it and make it your own, but you have to master that. So until you master what you're going to do, and it takes 10,000 hours to master anything. So no one's a master, you know, um, but definitely practice, practice, practice. Um, with that, and, and I, I think it's important to say, practicing so that you're not making a fool of yourself, practice with your spouse, your significant other, your children, it doesn't matter, sit them down and tell them if you want candy this week, you're going to have to listen to me go off about this. I tell everybody this, and it's true when I went to my first listing appointment, and I bombed at a level that was epic failure. It was the best bomb ever. I mean, flop sweat, cotton mouth, couldn't talk, horrible. My ex-wife, who's still a very, very good friend of mine to this day can do my listing presentation because I made her listen to it quickly every single day. Four days a week was a minimum standard, four days a week for a year. I never had flops, but again, until I stopped doing it for, this is the second, so piggybacking on that. I stopped when I was heavily involved in the REOs and started going up in listing presentations again in 2014. My first listing presentation, it's against, wouldn't you know it, a woman named Jenny Weimert, who her and I were in the same office, neck and neck. We we're always one and two. I was one. She was two. At this point, she blew up her team. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, so are you meeting with any other agents? Said, yeah, we're meeting with Jenny Weimert in about an hour. And I hadn't practiced in probably six years. Flop sweat, cotton mouth, literally perspiration. Um, for This is no way to put it. Boob sweat underneath my, uh, my, my pecs. It was just, it was horrible. I didn't get the listing. Back to repeating my listing presentation. Practice what you're going to do. Put yourself in an uncomfortable environment. Laugh at the mistakes that happen. You're going to get yelled at. We just had Deborah nailed this one. She goes, it's not soliciting. It's public service. I'm not soliciting. I'm your neighbor. I'm not soliciting. I'm the cup of sugar person. I'm here to help you with anything you need because I believe in community. How can you get pissed? And if they do, who cares? Oh, right? I had someone call me. I... From that night that I door knocked, I had someone call me. It's like, it's eight o'clock at night and you're soliciting me. And I said, ma'am, um, I, I do apologize about the time. It, it was actually 7.45, it wasn't eight o'clock. And I'm just like, I, you know, I was not trying to solicit you. I only wanted to invite you to the open house. And she goes, oh, 
are you the agent that sold the house 146 Ari away uh, like a week and a half ago? I said, yes, ma'am, that's me. She goes, thank you so much for inviting me. I will see you this weekend. So that's, I love that. And that's how you turn it around. I want to give you some mirror and match again. Liz, you'll love this one. So I used to, um, I, I was nervous when I first got started real estate back in 2002, couldn't talk, couldn't do anything. And I would get up at five in the morning and I would put an envelope and in that envelope was a hand, was a, a note with a hand signature on it. And I put it in the doors, you know, in the door jam where there's that little spongy stuff. Mm -hmm. I put it in there so that I didn't have to meet anybody. So I get a phone call. And I, at this point I was in coaching. So I, I knew about mirror and matching. I get a phone call from a guy. He goes, this is like the third time in, in three months. You put this on at my side. It says right there, there's no soliciting and, and you can't do this. So I mirrored and matched them. You're absolutely right. I would file a complaint against me. That is just unacceptable that I did this. I am furious that this happened as you should be too. In fact, what is your address? I'm going to come down. I want to see that sign. I want to introduce myself and make sure that I never, ever, ever show up at your house again. And he gave me his address. I listed his home two weeks later. Okay. But he wasn't mad when I showed up. He goes, oh, I really appreciate you coming over. I said, well, I'm, I'm pissed. And he wasn't pissed anymore. So I said, I, you know, it's just nice to see that. So I know not to do this. And I don't want to bother you because I'm your neighbor. He goes, well, I'm actually going to sell my house in a couple of weeks. You want to look at it? Yeah, I, I do. Actually, uh, I'd be glad to take a look at it. So remember, it's okay. And Liz, I love this. In the rain. This is ridiculous. Seriously. Brian, you digging this? Because we can hear you, brother. <laughs> and Brian's like, what? Whoops. I got you, man. You're good. In the rain, knocking on doors, I think that's something we should all consider doing. The upside of this for everybody is you now, uh, let's, let's recap this for everybody. When you started with the GPS group and, and you switched over and came over to our brokerage, um, how many transactions have you closed in the last, what, six months? Four, really four months, right? Four months. 11. 11. And how many listings do you have coming that you're pretty assured of? Um. I was going to say anywhere between five to eight, probably more seven. Okay, seven. Just awesome. with the open house. Mm -hmm. Right on. And are you going to continue to do what's caused success? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Are, are you capped? I mean, were you 100%? I know the answer. I am is. capped. I am capped, guys. I am striving for icon. So I joined Got Grit this. to make sure that I hit icon this year. I, I know you will because, well, first off, Tom and I won't let you not do that. And we're going to ride you. And now you have accountability with literally a hundred yeah, people. Um, I'm going to put Joe, do me a favor, find her phone number, put it in there and everybody text her every single day. Are you doing your job? Are you doing your job and blow up her? No, don't do that. I'm just kidding. That's not fair. But let's open it up for some questions and answers. Anybody have anything they want to discuss? This is your opportunity. Just raise your hand or if you want to jump on in. I'm an open book, guys, so you guys can ask me anything. I will door knock with you. I'm always okay with that. Mr. Martin. She set up her accountability with her sellers by committing to go do it. You know, and that's really, we got to do that with ourselves. Just commit to go doing it, you know? That's it. Yeah. Um, Will, you brought up something. Will Matthews, folks, uh, a friend of mine, very dear friend of mine, somebody I loved to death. Um, we have in here a hundred people that are open to accountability. Tom Martin's mine, uh, dibs. I got him just because we grew up together in real estate, literally the same time, same office 20 years ago, but who's your accountability partner? Who's the person you're saying? Maybe it's your spouse. And by the way, spouses suck as accountability partners because they are just no. brutal. My uh, husband, no games. He's the one who puts out my signs. He's the one that's posting on my social media. He's like, did you talk to this many people today? You better go door knock. He was the one bragging on me. Like, you better go door knock on the rain. So I will tell you, my husband is the, if I'm the brain, he's the heart. It's just, we work so, he is, that is my guy. He is my number one. He will tell me like, Oh, I don't know what to tell you, but you need to go do that. I don't care what that is. You need to go do that. So I will give all the kudos. My success, you know, it has everything to do with my husband. That is true. I love to hear that. Folks, being a little uncomfortable. Ken, I'll be right there, Ken. Good to see you, Ken. God darn it. I love Ken. He's great. Um, being uncomfortable. You will become comfortable in what you're uncomfortable in through experience. Everybody do this for me. Everybody, and I promise I'll get right to the questions real quick. Everybody take your hands and put your hands together, make a fist like this where you not lock your fingers. Now, which thumb is on top, the right or the left? 
You, right. you don't have to tell me, but take a look at it. Now what I want you to do is I want you to do the same thing, but have your other thumb be on top. How weird does that feel? Now, here's the funny thing. You can change how weird that feels because, and, and I did this, I used to clap like this. This was my normal clap, but I saw Tony Robbins clapped and I liked how he clapped because he didn't have to clap as much. So I switched it. And now this is very, very normal for me where it used to be like this. You can right. program yourself to anything being comfortable, but you have to start with uncomfortable and move through it through repetition, through mastery, as you talked of, Liz. There's so many opportunities out there. And the only thing that's going to slow us down individually, usually, is ourselves. Get a coach. Get into coaching. Get into grit. Holy crud. Get into grit. There's more of that on Friday. But folks, don't accept that it's just you because it's not. You're surrounded by people that actually don't give a damn about you and then there's this hundred of us that really do i was just kidding all right regina can i call on you you got your hand up young lady it's all yours yes hi good morning everyone and thank you for the call um it was awesome you know uh the thing and congratulations to both ladies they're amazing um i'm in real estate i'm coming up on my uh one year anniversary um I was started off on a team in a different organization, make a long story short, I left and now I'm on my own, um, which is, is a scary thing. I, I did close on, uh, on three houses in the last two months, so that's, that's okay. I really need to do more and I'm looking for an accountability coach or someone to push me along. I need it badly. Yeah. I have tons of motivation, but I just keep doing the ADHD thing where I, I, I look at what I need to do for the day and then I get distracted and I'm, I'm working on um, uh, something different. You know, I just can't seem to get myself going on these things that I know I need to do. And I live in a community. Uh, it's, it's not the best. I wouldn't want to door knock my neighbors. It's a, it's a little bit of a rough area. So that's not a good place to start. Anybody who has suggestions or willing to coach in uh, the West Palm Beach area, you know, um, I'm even willing to pay someone. I just need, I need help. Okay, Getting so, the grit. Um, first off, <laughs> thank you so much, Regina, for, for saying that and being open. There is, there's an accountability coach in here, but I want to talk about accountability. If you don't mind, Liz, this is important. Yes. With accountability, it's not chit chat. It with like when, when we're doing coaching, I know this is Tom because when he's coaching me, it's a 30 minute time, not accountability isn't, but it's 30 minutes and there isn't stories of my family and I don't get to go off on stuff that I want to talk about. I get to talk about things that are important. Accountability is the same thing, Regina. So you're going to need to know, be able to tell your accountability partner. All of us need to have an idea of what is our minimum standard today? What are we going to do on a daily basis? Liz is awesome door knocking giddy had hers so Regina um, get on the Friday calls for sure because they're really coaching based and make sure you have a clear idea of what your business model is where you're generating business uh, are you door knocking and, and door knocking every listing all the time no questions asked what is your minimum standard commitment and then anybody here can be accountable with you as long as they have something too. Uh, if you would Regina your um, may I share your phone number. Absolutely. 100. Okay, what, what's your phone number, Regina? 609. Hold on one second. I'm not that fast. 609. Yep. 661. I'm sorry. 661-0403. Okay. That's Regina's phone number for accountability. Anybody's interested in accountability. It is a five minute call every day. Massive cheerleading for success. And did you do what you're doing? No, I didn't do it today. Okay, how come? What got in your way? Well, I said, this, okay, cool. So tomorrow, can we commit to doing it again? It's helping and inspiring and, and helping somebody be the best they possibly can. We are not beating people up. You can do this. All of us can do this and we can do it together because we're not alone. This is a community of agents helping agents. So Regina, I hope you get somebody in there. If not, stick around for the after party, talk a little bit more. The after party is, that's what it's for. It's to help everybody get better connected because together we can, know, we can beat anything. Miss Claire, you have your hand up. What can we do for you? So I think that what Regina brought up was really kind of awesome. I live in a rural area. However, when I do door knocking, I do door knocking around the listings and in the neighborhoods where I have listings. So for open houses and things of that nature. So um, 
y'all know I live in a rural area. George teases all the time. However, in the beginning, I always did the 10, 10, 20, where I mail out personal invites, but then I knock before it and after it. So that's some way that I got around, you know, rough areas or rural areas or whatever. It's wherever the listing was, I chose to do my activities around that. Love it. Claire, thank you very much. Um, Liz, questions for Liz as well, because we have her on the phone. We actually, she's on these calls quite frequently. Shocker, success leaves clues. Honestly, the way you participate, having the, you know, having your cameras on is imperative because you pay attention in a different way and just be present. I can tell you these calls have changed my business because I get a nugget every single day. It's, It's so important, guys. And it just boosts your confidence because you're talking, you know, we get to talk in, you know, mastermind with each other. So it builds that confidence when we're going and talking to our clients. 1000%. So I'm going to do an accountability with everybody just so that we're all doing uh, since we're focusing on accountability. Um, there are some nuggets in here and I've always wanted to do something with YouTube and be a little more present on YouTube and on social media. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of encapsulate that into a short five minute video, taking the best of the best out of here. And my goal is to do it a minimum of three times per week. And it's going to start today. Now I'm accountable with a hundred of my friends. God bless you guys for helping me out. Remember, if I do a great job, tell me if I don't uh, support me. And that's what accountability is. And Regina, I'm positive. We'll find you an accountability partner. So stick with us, kid. We're glad you're here. Hey, John. Tom, I was literally just going to say I got a call on Tom just because it's so good to see you. And I can't, I can't not do a call without getting some partnership here. <laughs> Shoot, brother, it's all you. I, I apologize for not getting on the call for the entire time. I want to say I'm extremely proud of everyone that got on this call and taking time out of their day. And and by the way, when I got on, there was over 107 people. So congratulations, George, on uh, this attendance. But not only that. The, the the young ladies are are doing what they need to do they have a why and they do what it takes to succeed and that's that's really what it takes it takes a lot of uh, it takes a lot of guts and courage to trust the process um so i apologize for the santa claus beard uh but i haven't shaved in a week so my son is coming home today awesome. and, uh, that's all good news so um, prayers prayers his son was uh, had some real challenges in there. We weren't sure uh, where it was going to go, quite honestly. And the uh, prayer warriors came out. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Tom. We're glad. But his name is TJ. If you are a faith-based person and feel the need, let's throw a prayer up there and lift TJ up. Uh, can't can't have can't have our kids have anything but good stuff. And for anybody on this call, please, if you ever run into a situation where you've got a family member or somebody that is in a hard position, stick around till the after call because we're pretty close to it at this point. It's a great opportunity to have others to be here to support you and support you in uh, your your I, internal strength. I um, will tell George what's what was extremely overwhelming is how do I contact everybody that's been reaching out to me? Yeah. So uh, I thank everyone uh, in our group. I thank our uh, our calls for everybody on our calls. But more importantly, I just want to say, if you got something out of this call today, put it into action. But also, there, there's the, the power of our words. The power of our words can do so much. So if you care about everyone else in this industry that you have a relationship with, you got to invite them to a call let's not take this and be greedy just for ourselves. Invite somebody so it can make a change in their life. Uh, that's what Claire did to Liz. You know, um, Liz didn't just say, hey, I'm joining. Liz got on these calls and she was going to join anyway, but she got on the calls and seen the power and the, the power in this group and this organization is extremely uh, powerful if you allow yourself to engage. If you don't engage, nothing will happen. There's no value if you don't engage. So uh, super excited for everyone that got on the call. And uh, thank you for all the support. Absolutely. Guys, I just want to share one last nugget before all of you hang up. Guys, these are my signed listing agreements for the two listings that I carried, um, that I picked up the night that it was raining because I carry these in my purse. There's a listing agreement. <laughs> there is a, so guess what? They were signed right then on the spot. Carry your listing agreements with you. Now it is imperative. Let's let's and add one thing. And buyers. Let's add one thing to this. 
uh, which is Liz, that is huge. Y'all get that. She has them with her at any given time. If you're talking to somebody, have you ever thought of saying this? You know what? I would love to do a little stirring of the market before we're ready to actually place your home live. Now, I need you to authorize me to do a little internal marketing. I can't do that without your authorization. I happen to have the agreement here, which gives me the authority to start to turn the waters. Nobody will show the home. Nobody will know it's yours, but I get to talk more and stimulate the market a little bit on your behalf. Would you authorize me to do that? Sure, I would. Bring out the listing agreement. And Guess what? The back. Wet signatures are just as good as the e-signatures. One hundred percent. So this authorizes me. You don't need anything else. You don't need the disclosure. So we'll do all that when the time comes. But we want to do this and want to come up with what we figure is the price. Now I'll never put the price anywhere. But this allows me to start stirring the water. Yeah. You have a listing that nobody else can solicit. It's a signed listing agreement. They're not going to talk to their best friend's cousin's neighbor's buddy. You have it. So if they say they're interested, say, oh my God, and this house is amazing. I have people that would probably be interested in knowing about it. Would you mind if I were, would you authorize me to have conversations about what's coming on with your listing? Not the price, not the location, nobody will see it, but I want to create some energy for it before you place it on the market. Can we do that? Yeah, great. Here's the authorization form. It looks like a listing agreement. Oh, it is, but what we're doing is I'll put in the last page that the property is not going live until you authorize that as well with an estimated date of June 14th. This just lets me talk to people and make sure that there is a lot of energy around your home. That is a listing agreement. It's your listing. If they say they're going to list in three months, get them to sign it now. Here's why. Too many other things will happen. Open door, offer pad. By the way, we can compete with those. Why wouldn't you do that ahead of time? Liz, great job on that. That is huge. Thank you. Um, Connor wrote something. Hold on a second. If you're... Uh, okay, Con Connor, if you're on the phone, uh, you need to do this. You need to say this yourself. Can you can you jump off a of mute and, and tell us what you, and repeat what you just said, sir? Sure. Yeah. Um, awesome. Just thanks, Connor. Real quick, of course. Um, thanks for having the call. It was awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, I did a summer last summer actually with Vivint, which was a home security home automation team where I did exclusively outside sales, door knocking. Um, had to get my peddler's license is what they call it. Um, and the rule is across the board that if you're, there's no soliciting signs on people's doors and communities that aren't gated are more of a legally, at least a suggestion and uh, cops can't do anything in order to enforce that or to give you any issues or any problems. And that changes a little bit when you're in a gated community. Um, then it is technically trespassing if you do not get the good graces of the community um, however, like I was saying, we're not really, and we've referenced this multiple times, we're not soliciting. We are giving them an opportunity to exchange information and to make yourself available and uh, as a person in the community to help them out, which is not soliciting. So if you just structure your conversations correctly, you should be good across the board. Great news, Connor. And it's really nice to hear that this from somebody who literally did that for a living was the, the door knocking and, and selling in communities. So thank you very much for sharing that, Connor. Yeah. Um, I'm fairly comfortable your door knocking skills are going to be astronomically awesome. So uh, carry on, son. I, I'm right here watching you too. Hey, by um, the way, guys, yeah. door knockers, I, you know, anytime that a pest control guy or a or, or tree service guy, I, I run out the door and I, and I ask him, I say, hey, listen, I want to thank you. I'm, can I get a bunch of your cards so I can give them out to people? And by the way, here's some of my cards. If you know anybody looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, if they're already knocking on doors, they may they may be a good opportunity for you. So, perfect, love it, Tom. Thank you, folks. If you like this call, do me a favor. Post something on your social media, whatever brand you are. Say, oh my God, we had the most amazing conversation today, and talk a little bit about it. And just ask them, say, if any of my friends are interested in joining these, any of these calls, by all means do. Uh, we'd love to have it on there. It's agents helping agents. That's the philosophy behind the GPS group. It's growth, partnership, and synergy, all of us working together. And it's now 9.38. I'm eight minutes past my cutoff. I have work to do because I'm accountable. So I have to go to work. We're going to turn it into the after party. Tiffany, I'll leave it to you. Elizabeth, thank you 
so, so much. That was awesome. And for everybody participating today, God bless you. Thank you very much, Tom. I'm glad TJ is doing better. <coughs> love you guys. You're awesome. Remember, tell somebody you love them. Tell them that they're important, that you care about them. And I guarantee you're going to change their day. It will also change yours. You'd be amazed how it feels to come from contribution, come from love, and let them know that they're important to you. It may be the thing that saves their lives. Go out there and conquer the world. God bless you all. Love you. Have a great day. We'll talk very soon. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Fred DeFalco tomorrow. He's going to blow the roof off. I know what he's talking about, and I will be on that call. God bless you. Tip